Um, I want to present you another problem that's almost identical to what we just did before. Um, some of the language is, is different, but it's going to be basically the same problem as you can see. Imagine we have a Boy Scout who's participating in the sport of orienteering. Now, if your nerd sense is going off right now, that's because orienteering is the sport of compass, using a compass, right? Uh, so not a lot of people probably know how to do that nowadays, but it's, it's kind of a thing that a nerdy Boy Scout would do. Shockingly, I did this myself when I was when I was about 14 years old, 13 years old. Anyways, so he's participating in the sport of orienteering. He must find a specific tree in the woods as fast as possible. So again, it's a race. So like the last one, he has to do it in the fastest time possible. It doesn't matter about speed. It doesn't matter about distance. He needs to do it fast. It's part of a race. So he can get there by traveling east along the trail for 300 meters, as you can see illustrated. And then... Then north through the woods for 800 meters, uh, you'll notice the, the diagram is not drawn to scale. They never are. Uh, he can run 160 meters per minute along the trail, but only 70 meters, 70 meters per minute through the woods because, you know, doesn't want to run as fast. He might trip on a rock or run to a tree or something. Um, running directly through the woods towards the tree minimizes the distance but he'll be going slowly the whole time, kind of like with our rower, right? When the rower went diagonal, he went slower than when he went straight. Uh, so find the path that will give the Boy Scout to the tree in the minimum amount of time. Same basic, same basic idea as last time. We're going to say X is the distance from where he leaves the trail to the end of the trail. Then we're going to get 300 minus X right here as the distance he'll run along the trail. And then you get the square root of x squared plus 800 squared as the distance he'll run uh, uh, through the forest there. Uh, he can go down the trail at a speed of 160 meters per minute. And then he can run through the woods at only 70 meters per minute. What's the optimal solution? Well, it's going to be very similar to be, as before. Time, we equal the time he spends on the trail plus the time he spends in the woods. The time he spends on, along the trail will be 300 minus 7 meters divided by 160 meters per minute. That will give us minutes. And then the time he spends in the woods will take the square root of x squared plus 800 squared all over 70. You'll notice I haven't squared 800 yet. Um, I'm not going to for a while. I'm practicing what is often referred to in computer science as lazy computation. I will get around to it when I finally see a need. I don't see it yet, so I'm going to wait. If we take the derivative of t with respect to x, we'll get negative 1 over 160. Plus, we're going to get 1 70th times 1 half times x squared plus 800 x uh, uh, 800 squared to the negative one half power and times that by 2x you'll notice again that this one half cancels with this two and we get zero equals negative one sixtieth uh, we end up our right i'm sorry not equals that should be plus x sits above 70 times the square root of x squared plus 80, 800 squared. I mean, you'll see this calculation is, is almost the same thing, right? Uh, we could actually have put some variables in the original setting and try to solve this optimization problem in general. Uh, we're not going to be that ambitious right here. So x over 70 times the square root equals uh, 160, 1 over 160. Again, we will cross multiply we get that 160 x equals 70 times the square root. Uh, here, there is a common factor of 10 between 70 and 160. Let's cancel that out. And so then square both sides. We're going to get 16 squared, uh, which is 256 times x squared. This equals x, I'm sorry, 49. Don't forget that, 49 x squared plus 800 squared. Distribute the 49, we get 49 x squared plus 49 times 800 squared. Aha, I'm still being lazy in my computation here. Subtract 49 x squared from both sides. 
you'll get 207x squared equals 49 times 800 squared. And so divide both sides by 270, uh, not 270, 207. So you get x squared equals 49 times 800 squared over 207. And so then if we take the square root, you can see my laziness has paid off. x equals 7 times 800. I never knew what, had to know what 800 squared was. The square root of 207. And so that right there is approximately 389 meters. Okay. Um, coming back up to the picture above, what are fees? What's the feasible range for x right here? Well, x could be zero, in which case the boy runs immediately through the woods. And x could all the be up the way to 300, who runs to the end of the trail and then goes through the forest like that. 389, isn't that what we just got a moment ago? That would be like running down here and going backwards through that. That's not going to be an optimal solution. That's outside the domain right here. So it's like, huh, weird. And so if we look at our t-chart that we're going to create, turns out we don't want this number. The critical number eh, doesn't work. I mean, it does work, but it doesn't give us the optimal solution we're looking for. Uh, so we're looking for 0 to 300. Which, if you plug in 0, it'll take the boy 13.3 minutes. And if he, goes, uh, if he goes down the end of the trail 300, then gets off, then it'll take him 12.21 minutes. And so this right here will give us the optimal solution. This is the minimum value. And so like I was like I was mentioning before, I, in the last video I mentioned, I don't know if I, I don't remember mentioning it in this video here, but when it comes to optimization, the critical numbers do not always give us the best answer. They oftentimes do. And because they do so often, we kind of forget that they're not the only options. The endpoints might be optimal solutions as well. Um, in terms of this case, minimizing the best strategy for the boy will be run 300 meters down the trail to the end and then go, uh, then go. I mean, I, I, the trail doesn't end at 300 meters, but if he keeps on going, that's going to add more distance, uh, more time than necessary. So do always make sure you're checking the endpoints, not just the critical numbers. Sometimes the endpoints are, are silly. They give you like zero or infinity or things like that, but they actually can give you the optimal solution. So watch out for them.